We're not, because our next speaker is going to come from, from, from the internet. Wow. There we go. We've got our live feed. Melbourne to Berlin. Berlin to Melbourne. Uh, so, Selena, have you heard the cybersecurity joke? Michael, focus. Cybersecurity is no joke. Oh, I've got one though. <clears throat> Why should software architects never design high security fences? I don't know, Selena. Why should software architects never design high security, high security fences? Because they will make them highly scalable. Our next talk, our next talk will show us how to build secure products. You will learn how to design with security in mind so that security isn't a blocker, but an enabler for innovation. Victoria Dalak is a software security engineer, a writer, and a YouTuber. Hit the subscribe and notification button now. <laughs> She's organized over 30 workshops for web users, a community she co-founded in 2012, and she's a Rails Girls mentor. Yay, we got some Rails Girls people in the audience. Woo! Now, even though she's right here on screen, we don't know if she pairs, but given all the workshops and mentoring she does, I bet it's a skill she has. I heard when you approached her about pairing, she ran away and said, I'm remoting on this session. Well, pairing with me might be a nightmare, but security doesn't have to be a nightmare. Presented by Victoria Dalach from Berlin. Okay, now it should... Okay, now it works. Okay, cool. Um, is it okay that I don't hear the crowd? Uh, Okay, sorry. So, hello, I am so sorry that I'm bringing you the remote uh, conference experience. <laughs> I actually got uh, tested uh, positive for COVID on the day of my flight. So, I trust me, I wish I was with you in this room. Um, but let's not talk about uh, my state of health. Let's talk about security. So, imagine this. It's Monday the last sprint of your project and you think you've just had the planning you have like two bugs to uh, to fix and documentation like f you just need to finish the doc documentation and you're done you feel great you feel excited for the release you're excited for the next project that's coming you feel overall like it's Monday, but you feel good, you know? You know this feeling? On Tuesday, engineering manager comes in the room and she says, look, it would be great if, if we could run this project through security, you know? It would be great. And in this case, it would be great means we must do it. So you go to the meeting with the security. Oh my God, they ask so many questions and they're so annoying. And they're like, oh, like they're asking you about this documentation that hasn't been finished yet. Ah, and after the meeting, you end up with this. Um, you can forget about two bags to fix. It's like a whole bunch and if you ask me, I also have no idea what a snail is doing up there. I've been in this situation way too many times. And every time we would agree, and we would have this beautiful meeting called Project Retrospective. Do you know this meeting, Project Retrospective, when you're like, what went well, what went not so well, what we want to improve. And we would always say, we would always agree that having the security check uh, in the last sprint um, is just not a good idea. And then we would, the, the minute we finish the 
uh, the meeting, we would completely forget about it and move on, and the same uh, and the next project, the same problem will happen. Would happen. Does it fa sound familiar? I hope it doesn't. Uh, okay, I cannot hear if you are, if there's, if you have any kind of response. I cannot hear it, so it's funny. Okay. So who am I? I am. Uh, yeah, you know my name. I'm uh, I'm originally from Krakow, Poland, but I'm based in Berlin. Uh, I've been working for tech uh, for over a decade uh, as a software engineer, and and uh, two years ago I made a slight transition in my career and I joined the security team. By the way, all of the notes and everything what I'm talking about now is already under this link or will be in like the next couple of days. So please uh, like remember this link. You don't have to make any notes right now. Um, it's my name. You can read, so why am I saying that? Okay. <clears throat> ah, sorry. During, the, during my transition, I learned a little bit uh, like... You know, it was incredible because I stayed in the same company, but I had this experience, uh, this opportunity to experience the work from a different perspective. So uh, I would have like a very productive meetings as a software engineer with my peers, and there would be like collaboration happening and everything. And then I switched the roles, I became a security engineer, and suddenly I became like a stakeholder it completely changed the dynamic in the, me in the communication. It was a very interesting experience. And today I would like to share with you basically low-hanging fruit of security with a twist. So I will focus on very, very, very practical tips. And then I will share with you a piece of theory that will be like can be and will be, in my opinion, completely transitional for your relationship with security. Okay, so, a strawberry, sanitize the input. What is important, you never want to trust uh, your user with what they are sending you. Uh, you need to sanitize input, which means that you want to clean up what the data you're getting uh, from them so that uh, they cannot uh, they, they cannot inject any scripts into your website. Sanitize the input. Um, we, we are very privileged in uh, in Ruby community and in Rails community because in Rails we have uh, sanitization helper. I think that's right. <laughs> I, uh, I I hope I don't mix it. And in Ruby uh, work we have a gem. Uh, called sanitize. So it makes the, the sanitization pretty easy. Sometimes you want to allow um, your user to, I don't know, like style their, their well, I don't know, blog or something or description. However, you want to prevent them from injecting a, like a script, for example. And it will, yeah, so this is the first, the first step, very basic. The second, validate the data. And not only uh, username and email, uh, you want to validate everything that goes to the database. Because remember, database is your biggest asset. Is your, <laughs> I'm listening to Lord of the Rings, so we would say that, uh, uh, right now, so we would say that database is your precious. Um, and be, because, you know, like, is, is therefore, because, uh, sorry, that therefore you need to protect your data, uh, database. And, and to uh, protect your database, you need to validate the data you get, fr gave, uh, get from the user. Why? Because people will forgive you if your system is unavailable like to a certain degree, but, but people do forgive, I don't know, uh, Instagram to be down, 
but they would never forgive uh, if any data is lost. So if they log in and all of their posts on Instagram are gone, or all of their followers, or uh, stories, or whatever. Therefore, like database is th your biggest your biggest asset. Validate the data, and pay attention to legacy views, uh, so, uh, to legacy models, to models that has be, ha, have been around for a couple of years in your application. It's very important to validate all the data that you get from the user. These are low-hanging fruit and um, are pretty uncontroversial, I think. Okay, so... Okay. The next thing is no credentials in your repo. And I know what you may think. You may think, ah, but for testing it's okay. No, it's not okay for testing because uh, two things. First of all, unfortunately, the providers we use often, when you, uh, by credentials, I mean, uh, emails, uh, passwords, tokens, right? So the problem here, two things, as I said. First, when you get, uh, w w when you create an IP token for, for, uh, for GitHub, let's say, uh, maybe not GitHub, but uh, for any provider, you know, for CI, uh, oh, let's, let's say CI, Often, you cannot scope those tokens. And what you may think is just a testing token can over time become a token that has power over all of your projects in this CI account. So that's the problem. Also, if you can like always scope down the the token. The second, the second problem with like, testing credentials is that you, like, we are programmers. We are lazy. And over the time, you may think, oh, I use this token for testing in one project. Oh, I can use it in the other project. And then, oh, I have this token. <coughs> You, my friend, can also use it, and it gets out of control. Therefore, sometimes, um, sometimes uh, security researchers find those t so-called testing tokens that have that that, if found by malicious actor, could uh, basically make the whole project un. Uh, uh, not able to be developed, to be deployed. Sorry for this broken English, but I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So don't put credentials in your repo. There are many ways to to store uh, your credentials safely, uh, and uh, security uh, uh, secret management is a fascinating topic. So, um, but it was not. Uh, uh, th this presentation was not uh, big enough for for having it. Okay. The good thing is, the good thing here is a per. Why is it a per? Because it's a low hanging fruit, but you need to work a bit. So you can, and I encourage you to delegate as much as work as you can uh, as as you can to the machines uh it will it will require you to talk to some people because uh in your company because usually you need to purchase the products but it's totally worth it so what i what i mean by to uh, machines or robots is there are scanners that allow uh, that will test the security of your applications for you. 
uh, there are two types, uh, I mean, not two, but two of the most popular types of those scanners are DUST and SUST. DUST is a dynamic application security testing. And what it does, it's, uh, it communicates through the front end with your application and provides as many malicious outputs as there are. And it, show, and it reports to you whether or not it found a vulnerability, a potential vulnerability in your application, which is super handy. And the other thing, the other scanner, is static application security testing, SAST. And it's also very interesting and useful because what it does, like, it scans your code base and based on the code uh, ba ba based on the code you write it reports to you vulnerabilities potential vulnerabilities and this is awesome because you can integrate it in your workflow in your github pull request or uh, or gitlab and and watch uh, what it does, it will scan only the, the committed changes and it will show you, uh, oh, here it's a potential SQL injection or something. It is super useful because I per personally, I don't know what are your thoughts on that, but I personally think that there is so much pressure on developers to deliver like great software, but at the same time, there is little time and your priorities and can be like and your mind can be like on performance for example and and you will not like spot a vulnerability security vulnerability or it's just too tricky you know and i think that we should use more um those kind of tools because yeah so 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 we're more more productive uh, so think about it and uh, and definitely invest in that if you have like organization that is that's growing or and if it's big it's a must actually to have those kind of scanners okay now I need tea uh, because I'm I feel I'm running through this uh, presentation Okay, so what I will share with you right now is something I learned during, uh, during my transition process from software engineering to security engineering, and it absolutely blew my mind, and it's theory, but it's not very difficult. Stay with me. Are you with me? I hope you said yes, but I cannot hear you. So that's that. So there are two problems I see with our approach to security. First of all, product people, designers, managers, owners, they s s see security solely as an engineering problem. On the other hand, we software engineers are often so focused on delivering like MVP or we're so focused on getting the things out there that we tend to put security features on the shelf labeled nice to have. This is the problem I see. On the other hand, security is a problem. What is security? I'm pretty sure if I asked you, each of you, what is security? Each of you will, would provide a different answer. And now think about, think about, 
the project that you work on. How do you know that it is secure? I don't have an easy answer, I'll be honest with you. Security is a huge topic, is an ocean, and you in Australia know much better than I do what an ocean is, let's face it. Security is a huge topic, it's application security, infrastructure security, cloud security, uh, IT security, there are threats that you cannot think of. There are so many threats. There is an ocean of threats. It's like you can never say definitely how many uh, attack vectors there are, for, uh, there, uh, there are for your application. That's scary. But there is hope and I'm bringing it to you, Australia. So that was uh, very forward of me, but this is what I believe in. So, so this, uh, there is, to stress again, there is an infinite amount of threats. But all of these threats can be assigned to one of three categories. I'm giving you time to, uh, to I'm giving you time for, for to, 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 to understand that. So this whole ocean, two cate three categories, and it will be, um, okay, three categories. These categories are confidentiality, integrity, and availability. What, it's, uh, what is known as the CIA triad. I will not make a joke about spies, because the only spies I like to talk about and think about are Spice Girls. So here you have it. So what it means is that you put this ocean into three buckets. Three packets. This is the most artistic picture of three packets that I could find on the internet. Okay. Okay, so I am talking riddles to you right now. Like, what is the meaning of it? Before I tell you why is it so important, let me just establish what uh, CIA means. <clears throat> Confidentiality. We want secrets to be secret. If I send uh, an email to Ruby Conference, I want only Ruby Conference to to read it, right? If uh, yeah, we understand that. If I if you send a, a WhatsApp message to your partner, you only want your partner to be able to read it. You don't want anyone to interfere in your communication. We want secrets to be secret. Integrity. We get what we expect. So when I when you log in to your Instagram account, I'm sorry, uh, you want to, to see all of the posts that the posts that you posted. You want to see all of your data basically. Your followers, your followings, etc. You expect uh, you expect uh, you, you get what you expect. This is the integrity. And availability. We can always access the information. So we expect, we expect to, you know, all of the web to be available 24-7, right? We want to be able to send an email in... Uh, uh, in during the night, or we want to be able, as me, to access StreamYard at uh, 5 a.m. in the morning, right? I mean, a.m. is in the morning, so what am I talking about? Availability. Okay, so how is it helpful? 
it is helpful because right, because it allows you to deal with the buckets instead of dealing with the ocean and instead of being overwhelmed with what security is how, where where can i start do i focus on vulnerabilities do i focus like SQL injections do i prevent this and that instead of thinking like that and being completely overwhelmed with security you can ask the question the question because security of your project starts with one question and this question is how the CAI of this project can be broken how can the CAI of this project be broken And this is absolutely fundamental and beautiful because think, yeah, just let's stop this presentation, stop! And think about the project that you're working on. I hope you have it. You can ask the CIA question for this project. Ask this question in your mind. How can the CIA of blah be broken? It will work. It will work no matter if you're front-end, back-end, DevOps, if you, if you do mobile, if you're a product uh, manager, if you're a developer, if you're, if you're a designer. You can ask this question for anything you work on and you will work on. I find it super cool. So, of course, asking one question won't be enough. And for each of the triad, if for each category you need to ask separate questions. And to give you an example, here there are confidentiality, who can see this resource, uh, how do we store credentials, do we log sensitive data, for integrity, who can create, update and remove a resource, is there a way to see, uh, a malicious actor deleting all the resources of our customers, what happens when malicious data is sent via form, for availability, is this endpoint rate limited? What happens when external product is down, uh, etc. So, when should you do this? Shift security left. So, we have this, we have this exciting new uh, approach to security, which is called shift security left. And if you ask any application security engineer about it, they will be excited and thrilled to talk about it with you. Basically, what we see is that, well, in traditional uh, software development lifecycle, we have six, uh, no, five phases, right? Requirement analysis, design, implementation, testing, evol uh, evolution. But in reality, from my experience, I don't know if you agree, this is not a cycle, it's just a line. You analyze, design, develop, test, maintain, and then move on to, enough, uh, to another project. Am I right? No one has time for improvements. Anyway, um, when we see a software development timeline like this, because it's not life cycle anymore, uh, what happens is, what I said in the beginning of my presentation, that we have security uh, review during the test, very close to release uh, phase, right? So shifting security left means shifting security to the, uh, to the earlier stages of your project. So during the design project, uh, the design phase, when you are thinking of how to solve the problem, it's great to engage with security team 
and think about security by asking the CIA uh, questions. Why? Because every change, uh, b because first of all, when you do security uh, review at the end of your presentation, uh, for, for Jesus, not presentation, at the end of your project, um, then you have those changes to do, uh, changes to make, that are, ju that are just so expensive and stressful and time-consuming because every change that requires you to touch any code is a highway to hell, basically. Uh, but if you have changes to do, to make in your design phase, in the design phase, then what you change? You just change something on a piece of paper. That's it. You just write some words down. That's it. It's super, sh uh, uh, it's super fast. Uh, it's super easy. And it costs basically nothing. Uh, therefore, shifting security left is the way to go. And, and the CIA triad can help you do that. I'm speeding up now because I, I know that time is short. But everything you will find under the link that I provided. So I'm not uh, stressed about uh, that. Ah, 10 minutes. <laughs> ah, 10 minutes and I can have a sip. Can I have a sip? <sighs> oh, people cheering. Thank you for cheering, people. Um, so how to implement the CIA triad? When you think about your practice, you need to inject. You need to inject the CIA triad. Uh, you can present it to your peers. The, the point of doing the, asking the questions uh, is to work with your uh, fellow designers and uh, engineers in your team. So, you know, like to have like a brainstorming session so you can find as many problems with your design as possible. But make it, make it more than just a spontaneous action. Make it part of your process. And you can do it by um, updating, like when, when you, I, I believe that in your organization you have like templates for for documentation, for solution briefs, for enhancement proposals, requests for comments, etc. Like however you call it. Update those templates with the CIA triad. Um, yeah, how, how does this impact confidentiality, integrity, availability? Make it obvious so that other engineers can can use it and and um, and can create more like the, uh, solutions with security in mind. This is very important. Um, yeah. So so this is it. This is and and it may sound like a lot and it may sound a bit scary, but trust me, the more you do it, the easier it gets, and. And it is like a very healthy way to approach security, to make it a little bit more um, more likable, you know, less scary, less stressful. And uh, investment of shifting security left um, will also give you this uh, more confidence in what you are building is actually the right thing. I mean, right in the uh, right is maybe the wrong word, but um, that it's like the right in the sense that it's secure. I need another sip. Okay, so to finish, you know there is there is no week when we don't hear about yet another data breach or a vulnerability 
that was found in one of the libraries that the whole world uses. And I would like us to step up as an industry and to earn the engineering um, label or role and to understand that the time, the careless times of move fast and break thing must be over because we as people who create technology, we impact people's life in a way that is unheard of and on the scale that is unheard of. And we need to take responsibility for that. And building security, uh, secure products is definitely a part of being a great engineer. I will finish with that. Use the CIA questions and thank you for having me. Again, I wish I was with you. Um, I hope it makes sense. Because I'm not here, I feel lonely. So please, please reach out um, on LinkedIn. I think it's the best or on Twitter. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, thank you very much, Victoria Dalach. Dziękujemy bardzo z Australii. Thank you. Um, I, I, I'm <laughs> Polish. You're Polish. Just to give you feedback, we had a whole huge room here laughing with you, laughing at your jokes. We all love the Spice Girl reference and everything else. And I think a lot of people are going to come out here and, and shift security left. So again, a big <laughs> thank you, Victoria Dalach. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.